it's Mr. Gordon uh, back for another week of pre-algebra on BCPS TV. These lessons are for the week of June 8th and we'll start with lesson one, multiple transformations. Our lesson objective is given a sequence of transformations, students will graph multiple transformations on the coordinate plane. All right, let's review two key vocabulary words. Uh, the first is congruent. So congruent figures are two figures that are the same size and same shape. Uh, therefore, in terms of transformations, congruent figures will be two figures will be congruent if one can be obtained from the other by rigid motion. A rigid motion is a sequence of rotations, translations, and reflections. Okay, let's take a look at our first example. So it says, translate figure A, one unit right and three units up to make figure B. Then rotate figure B 90 degrees clockwise around the origin to make figure C. So the reason this lesson is on for is multiple transformations is notice I have to do two things to figure A. So the first thing I have to do is I have to translate it. And then after I translate it, I have to rotate it. All right, so let's start with step one. Let's translate. So recall to translate, we are going to add to our x and y coordinates whatever it is we are trans however we are translating the figure so if we're translating one unit right so i'm going to go here to my first point and i'm going to go one unit right all right that means i'm adding one to my x value then i'm going to go three units up so following all here in the highlighter on the graph if I go three units up, that means I'm gonna add three to my Y value. So I'm gonna do that with each figure. So for figure, for each point, excuse me. So for figure A to B, we can add one to each X and add three to each Y. So if these were my original points, then I can add one to X, three to Y, and get my uh, new points for figure B. So if I graph each one of those, you'll see figure B uh, is gonna be this figure here in orange. So then after I translate it, I now need to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise around the origin. That means I'm gonna take the shape now and I'm gonna go in this direction and I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees. So if you recall our rules from last week, 90 degrees means that we're gonna take the points X, Y, and we're now gonna make them y negative x. So three one would become one negative three. And if I do that for each point for b, this would be my final transformation for figure c. All right, let's see how you can do with this. Um, so you're gonna answer the two questions below. So we have figure a in blue, and we have multiple transformations to give us figure C. So the first question would be, which rigid transformation, remember rigid transform transformation means a rotation, a translation, or a reflection, transform figure A to figure B, and which tra rigid transformation transform figure B to figure C? So I'll give you about uh, 20 seconds to think through these two answers. Okay, so hopefully you noted that figure A to figure B was a reflection over the y-axis. Recall each point on figure A is equal distance from the y-axis as each point on figure B. After our reflection on the y-axis, figure B to figure C was a translation uh, two units down. All right, your turn number two. Uh, answer this question below. 
So Caitlin transformed figure A to figure C. Describe the sequence of transformations she used to create figure C. I'll give you about 30 seconds. You got to figure out how did figure A go from figure B to figure C. All right, let's see how we did. All right, so we took figure A and figure A to figure B was a reflection over the y-axis. And then we actually had a 180 degree rotation. That would have been pretty tough uh, to see. So uh, let's see, first, Caitlin reflected figure A over the y-axis to create figure B. Then she rotated figure B 180 degrees around the origin. Now, you might notice that I didn't put 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. Because if you recall from last week, a 180 degree rotation clockwise and cl counterclockwise are both halfway around the circle. So uh, whether I go clockwise or counterclockwise, um, it doesn't matter. So Caitlin certainly did a nice job with this one. This is tough. Uh, hopefully you did as well. Uh, the big thing is hopefully you saw it was a reflection and uh, some sort of rotation. All right, congratulations, seventh graders. Uh, multiple transformations mark the end of our new learning uh, for this year. So the remaining time we have together today, we're going to spend uh, reviewing some of the key concepts for this year. Uh, so for the week of June 8th, our second lesson we'll start our year-end review. We'll look at two objectives to end the year. Uh, the first, we will combine like terms to simplify algebraic expressions. And our second is we will use inverse operations to solve step equations. Okay, so our key vocabulary for algebraic expressions. An algebraic expression is an expression that contains at least one variable. All right, very important to note. Algebraic expressions must have at least one variable. A term are the parts of an expression that are added or subtracted. So every term in an expression will be separated by addition or subtraction. Like terms, they are terms with the same variable. However, they also have to be raised to the same exponent. So x and x squared are not like terms because they're not raised to the same exponent. But 5x squared and 2x squared would be considered uh, like terms. Coefficient. Coefficient is the number multiplied by the variable in an algebraic expression. So an example I just gave, uh, 5x squared, 5 would be my coefficient. A variable, uh, hopefully remember that, you've seen that for some time now, that is a symbol used to represent a quantity that can change. You know, 99% of the time that symbol we see in math is going to be a letter and most often it's x. And a constant is a value that does not change. Um, so if the variable is a symbol and it's often a letter such as x, a constant then is just a number like five or nine or negative seven, something that's not going to change. Okay, so let's take a little closer look at some of this vocabulary. So adding and subtracting expressions. When we do that, we can use our properties of addition along with the distributive property to add and subtract algebraic expressions. This is often referred to as combining like terms. 
probably a, a phrase you heard in class this year. Because you can only ins add and subtract terms with the same variable raised to the same exponent, and you can only add and subtract uh, the constant term. So let's look at this and make sure we're clear with this vocabulary. All right, so we have three terms in this example. The terms are 3x, 5y, and 9. You see the terms down here. They are the terms because they are separated by addition or subtract. All right, now, within those terms, two of them have coefficients. The 3 and the 5 are considered coefficients because they are the number multiplied by the variable. Since the 9 isn't multiplied by a variable, that's considered our constant. X and Y are going to be our variables because they are shown through some sort of symbolic representation, in this case, uh, letters. All right, let's take a look at a real-world example uh, for algebraic expressions and combining like terms. So Jill and Kyle get paid per project. Jill has paid a project fee of $25 plus $10 per hour. Kyle is paid a project fee of $18 plus $14 per hour. Write an expression to represent how much a company will pay to hire both to work the same number of hours on a project. All right, so as I look at this problem, um, I see an opportunity for two different algebraic expressions. One for Jill and another for Kyle. All right, so let's look at Jill first. Jill has paid a project fee of $25 plus, that's an operation for me, so I'm gonna pay note of that, $10 per hour. So when I look at Jill, I think I'm gonna need addition and I'm gonna need multiplication. And since I don't know the number of hours she works, that's gonna become one of my variables. Kyle, on the other hand, is paid a project fee of $18 plus $14 per hour. So when I look at this, I'm starting to think about like terms because both of them are working per hour, which makes me think that those variables are gonna mean the same thing. So let's take a look at what we do for step one. So first we're gonna write an algebraic expression for both. So you'll see Jill is 25 plus 10 H, where H is our number of hours, and Kyle is 18 plus 14 H, where H is also the number of hours. So now what we wanna do is write an algebraic expression to represent how much a company will pay to hire both of them to work the same number of hours. So for me, since they're hiring both, I gotta think I gotta add these two expressions together. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use a commutative property and I'm going to put my constants together and I'm going to put my like terms or my variables together and I'm gonna end up with 25 plus 18 is 43, and 10H plus 14H is 24H. So I know the company will have to pay both of them $43 plus $24 times the number of hours they work to have both Jill and Kyle work on the project. Okay, let's see how you can do. Uh, so let's see if you can simplify the expression 3X plus a half plus 7x minus four and a half uh, by combining like terms. I'll give you about a minute to see if you can simplify this expression.
Okay, let's see how you did. Um, so hopefully you notice we have uh, 3x and 7x. So they're going to be like terms. Um, we're going to have our constants uh, of 1 half minus 4 and a half. So I'm going to use some properties I know, and I'm going to uh, combine my, excuse me, I'm going to uh, rewrite this using a commutative property to get my 3x and my 7x together. And I'm going to use the add of inverse here to change minus 4.5 to adding a negative 4.5. So I end up with 3x plus 7x plus negative 4.5 plus a half. So combine your constants, combine your variables, and you should have ended up with 10x plus negative 4, or in a more simplified version, 10x minus 4. All right, now that we've combined some algebraic expressions, let's see if we can go to the next step and actually solve uh, some two-step equations here. So uh, let's recall with two-step equations, some key vocabulary. First is an inverse operation. Uh, inverse operations are operations that undo each other. So addition and subtraction are inverse operations because they undo each other. And multiplication and division are inverse operations. Uh, anytime we solve an equation, our goal is to isolate the variable, and that's to get a variable alone on one side of the equation in order to actually solve the equation. So before we were simplifying expressions, now we're going to solve equations. Okay, so notice the problems look a little bit different now. They have an equal sign, and our goal is to find that one value of x that makes this true. Uh, so I'm going to start by using my inverse operations, and I'm going to undo the addition by subtracting 5 from each side of the equation. I have to follow my rules of combining like terms. So 2x plus 5 minus 5, I can combine my 5 minus 5 to get 0, and I can combine 21 minus 5 to get 16. Now I'm going to do the inverse of multiplication which is dividing by 2. So 16 divided by 2 leaves me with x equals 8. And on my left-hand side, remember, the 2x and the 2, my 2s uh, divide out, uh, get, leaving me with just x. Remember, any time we solve an equation, we can always check to make sure we're right. So in order to do that, we're going to take that value 8, and we're going to sub it back into the equation to see if we get a uh, true equation at the end. So 2 times 8 is 16, and 16 plus 5 does indeed give me 21. So since I end up with 21 equals 21, I have a true equation knowing that uh, I've just justified that my solution is correct. All right, so it's your turn. Uh, let's see if you can do two things. Let's see if you can solve this equation and check your solution. I'll give you about one minute. All right, so let's see how you did. Uh, so let's see, our first step is we're going to uh, undo that subtracting eight by adding eight to both sides. We combine like terms, negative eight plus eight is zero and negative 20 plus eight is negative 12. We're going to divide by negative three 
And remember, a negative divided by a negative is always a positive. So our solution should have been x equals positive 4. See if our check works out. So a negative 3 times a positive 4 is a negative 12. Negative 12 minus 8. I'm going to use uh, uh, one of my rules that I can change subtraction to addition to get negative 12 plus negative 8. And a negative plus a negative would give me a negative 20. Uh, so I do get a true solution of negative 20 equals negative 20. All right, uh, boys and girls, that's all I got for you. Um, as you're winding down your seventh grade year, um, good luck. And as always, be good and be safe.